what is this place, everyone? Look at this. Can't believe there's not a no trespassing sign here. We're just gonna drive around this. We're not gonna go in it. I just wanted to see this. I just went by it. We're down here because we're about 20 minutes away from a place that we come down to check on that beavers always plug up and it makes the water flood up to the roadway. I imagine the beavers caused it again today because we haven't been here in nearly a month. That's pretty cool. A water tower. You can tell most of the building has been demolished. See over on the far section, foundation but no building. This week is very nice. I'm in Massachusetts right now. I don't know about down here, but I know the weather's cool in Massachusetts, which is a nice relieving sign. But you see the sky? A lot of those clouds are actually wildfire smoke mixed in. I know northern New England lately has been getting lots of rain where I live. Throughout the week, temperatures have been in the lower 50s and also every single day is light drizzled, no sunshine, which is a good thing because of the forest really needs it. It's able to retain it really easily, you know? It's really nice. Yesterday we had on and off downpours, which is a good thing because it's on and off, it can absorb without flooding. Really good for the environment and forest after many years of drought. This place is pretty interesting. Yeah, I see lots of foundations and stuff back here and I also see lots of broken glass. You can go a little further. There's, I have not seen a no trespassing sign. It's like a little off-road trail down here. We just passed an old garage or whatever on the left. Who knows what else could be up here. Right now in Massachusetts it's 64 degrees. Cool down quite a bunch. Hey look at this, it just goes right into a neighborhood. That's probably why there's no, no trespassing signs because people use it as a throughway. Just gonna turn it around real fast and go back. Thought that was really interesting though. Oh, now there's a sign that says private road emergency vehicles only. There wasn't one on the other side. But by the looks of it, it looks like Massachusetts hasn't been getting the rain. I know on the news they said Massachusetts for the past couple of days had some very bad air quality along with New York City. Not as bad as them though. But today there's no smog or anything I can see. You can't smell it or anything. It's all pretty lifted. It's high right now. But I thought this was cool. Just wanted to show this very cool building. I'm surprised they didn't demolish it all since they demolished the majority of it on the other side. All right, so we're gonna be arriving on scene in about 20 minutes or so. Stay tuned. All right, everyone, we're gonna be approaching in just a couple of short minutes. Now that we're into the middle of the month of June, the trees are pretty filled in and it's looking very beautiful around here. The only trees that are not completely filled are most likely stressed out from the years of gypsy moth infestation. You see all these nice oak trees around me? This time of year they should all be completely filled in. You see how a few of them up there are a little bit thin? They're just stressed out at the moment and the rain is a good thing. They will be able to bounce back if it keeps raining like it has been combined with the cold or weather. It's very beneficial for the trees recovery. If we get another hot year like we did last year, a lot of them are going to start dying out. I know like a week ago I was in the North Conway, New Hampshire area. They have so many dead oak trees that just are not coming back because of that issue. I love driving through these darker areas of forest. You know a lot of Massachusetts cities made it illegal to plant trees near the road anymore? I guess they want their cities to be hotter conducting in the sun just because they're too lazy to clean the storm drains. I am now noticing since the last time I was on this road, a lot of trees that are within a certain distance from the road now have red markings on them to be cut down. You know, these days, the DOT wants a certain margin of error. 
you know, in case you go off the road, they don't want trees within a certain distance, you know, so you don't hit them if you happen to go slightly off the road, which I personally think is dumb. There's a lot of them that they have marked to cut down. We just went by a little swampy area right there that we usually stop at when we're on this road, but there's never been a problem there. I was only attracted to that area the very first time because there was a large buildup of algae and stuff around the pipe, but it was just floating. There wasn't enough current to actually pull it through and there was nothing clogging it either. It looks like today we're coming from the opposite direction that we usually do. So we won't be driving by the swamp, but I'm gonna drive by it anyways and I'll just turn around and park where we usually do. It says on my GPS, 0.7 miles ahead. Hold filled Massachusetts roads usually feel horrible with with this new truck I can't even feel the potholes all right here we are arriving on scene this area does look very beautiful since the last time we came since it's really filling in with leaves here we are oh my gosh we got lots of water lilies opening up and it looks like the the discharge side of the pipe, the water's much higher too. I think the beavers are building a dam at the far end of the swamp. That won't cause a problem for a while, probably not a couple of years. But we're gonna turn around right here. There's a little dirt parking area probably created by fishermen. See right here? We can just go in here and let the one car behind me pass. Then we can pull right back out. There we go. No one else behind me. Let's turn around. Look at this little pond. That completely dried up in there. That had a lot of water last time, but I guess maybe it's only being filled by the drainage ditch. Water levels here look normal. Now up here, right at the beginning of this guardrail is where the water would begin crossing the street if the beavers had plugged it up. The water doesn't look that high this time. Maybe the beavers didn't do much or the DOT took my message and started unclogging it themselves. I'm all geared up, I got the big high boots on, but maybe there won't even be an unclogging. I think the swamp looks beautiful. Look at all the grass and lily pads that really grew in in the past couple weeks. Here's a little parking spot. Let's go look at the area before we get back out with everything. My personal opinion, leather seats do not belong in a work truck. Your back cannot vent. Makes me sweaty even when I am not even working. So, this area on the other side, there's no cars coming this time of day. Not much traffic. Rush hour hasn't began. It's about 3 in the afternoon. Got a lot of poison ivy all over the edges here. Yeah, the first time we came, this was all out of the water so a beaver dam is definitely making this build up you see the pipes are slightly in the water but this will take years to get up where the dot would even consider taking out that beaver dam and the department of natural resources would probably have to get involved in that one since this doesn't really involve a roadway even when it did start involving a roadway i don't think it'll ever get to that situation it would probably take five more years at least before a situation like that would happen. See, they have a dry fire hydrant right there that goes down here. And they need a pumping truck to suck it up because in the rural communities, they don't have city water, meaning no fire hydrants. Everyone got wells. Look at all the poison ivy creeping over here. Let's see what we got. I can already tell there's gonna be a little something. Oh, wow. It's actually holding up a foot of water. I'm surprised. I guess this area hasn't been getting all the rain my area has been getting. Because down there, it's definitely not as high as it's been in last times. And look, the lily flowers aren't even completely open yet. I love how this place transformed. This whole place was open water last visit. Look at all the grass that started coming up. Very nice wetland. Supposedly this part of northern Massachusetts actually has moose and they would love this come out here to graze But I've never seen a moose in Massachusetts. Not yet You can see right here the poison ivy is about to start flowering 
I'm personally not allergic to it, but I'm going to avoid contact because even people who don't get it, which is a smaller percentage, I think 18% or whatever, they don't get it, but with exposure to it over and over, you can lose your ability. It sounds like that would be the opposite, like with most food allergies and stuff, but nope. Just zooming in a little bit, those poison ivy flowers will be coming out pretty soon. Maybe next time we visit in a few weeks, these lily pads will be completely open, those flowers. I can't believe that they're not completely open yet. Those buds were forming when we were here, that was almost three weeks ago. All right, let's go grab camera number two and the tripod. You know, somebody asked me an interesting question in the comments that I didn't know the answer to, so I researched it. Can beavers get poison ivy? And I couldn't find that exact answer, but apparently dogs and cats, things like snakes and insects, they can't get it, so I would assume not. Would assume not. By the marks on these trees, this area of Massachusetts looks like it might be infested with the Asian longhorn beetle, which makes deep tunnels in trees and eventually makes the tree so hollow that it can dangerously fall over. Treading through all the poison ivy with the big high boots. Got a dragonfly. And this right here I'm pretty sure is a beaver trail because it goes right down the other side. This is how beavers get across the road since they can't go through the culvert with the grate. That grate on the other side is only there because of the beavers. Otherwise the state would let the natural debris just go through. The grate's there so the beaver clogs the end of it instead of the middle. Because if the middle of it was clogged, they'd have to come out here with excavators and they would probably have to get like a telephone pole or a long stick to jab in there with the excavator. Look at the pipes. The first time we ever unclogged this, there was lots. The water was pouring. Now you'll see rapids coming out, but you'll never see it pouring again. There must be a gigantic beaver dam at the end of the swamp going up. Over here used to be area I could walk on a couple months ago. Beavers are raising it up. And now we're about to set camera number two up. Get it running. Alrighty. Got a pretty good angle of the pipes. And, and it's, it's going. going. So, I asked in a few of my recent videos if people like me starting up camera number two on camera. And most people said yes. But people also say they miss my alignment noise. So this is the trail where the beavers are going down on the other side. So let's go in the water. Ooh, a frog jumped in. Alrighty, going on down. This is usually an extremely easy one, but very satisfying results. So, when we set the camera up, it's obviously uneven. So we have to adjust the tripod's legs like that. And we're good to start. Look at all that poison ivy right there. Ready to go. If you add an acorn, throw it up there, or maybe a squirrel will find it. There's poison ivy even growing inside the pipe. So let's just remove a couple big things and the grass and stuff can pass through like it naturally would. Wow, this is a big one. Heavy too, look at that. Let's move these out of the way. Very heavy signposts from back in the day. Newer signposts are not as thick because they don't want you to get killed if you drive through a sign on the side of the road. The newer ones are meant to bend. This might be heavy, there's a lot of mud right there. One, two, three. Yeah! A lot heavier than times past. Whoa! Got a salamander right here. Look at this dude. Salamander. Throw him back over there so we don't get sucked in. Woo! 
beavers. Oh, about completely open. Just pick out a little bit of that debris in there. This will make the water drop back like a foot. And people ask me all the time, why are you unclogging it if you know the beaver is just going to come back tonight and do it again? Because in this half a day, before the beavers do come back, we're draining a lot of water. And because there's not a ton of water feeding the place, this will take a week or two to get back up to this level, buying the road time from washing away. Time to lower away. All the way down to the bottom, yep. Don't want the beavers sticking stuff under. Now time to do the other side. And look at this, poison ivy's going nuts. Next time I'll definitely get some longer gloves as a precaution despite not being allergic. Cause I said you can become allergic. And I am definitely touching it. Oh. You can tell by my boots it's not as high as times past, like I said. Every other time it was almost getting inside my boots. And people will always ask me, uh, why don't you get taller waders? Why do you just have hip waders? Get waist, waist actually I would consider, like pants. But I won't get chest high because if they fill with water, oh, we found a leech. We just let them go through. If they fill with water when there's a lot of current, you're not getting out of there. I can barely walk when these ones flood. All clear, it appears. Got a big stick here. There. One more stick. Is it all clear? One more stick. That one went through. Lower way. Make sure it's down all the way, seated properly. Good. Put the sign post back up. Stick it in the ground a little bit, down into the mud, so beavers can't accidentally tip it over. Water here is nice and warm. So yeah, even though the water's warm, I wouldn't go swimming here. Just found a leech. Now anywhere, beavers are unlikely to attack. Beaver attacks are pretty rare as it is. And only one person has ever been killed by one. And that's because the beaver with its big teeth severed an artery. Beavers are more likely to be territorial in a small pond. This is a big area. A small pond means you're going to be close to their lodge, where probably their babies are, so that's why they'll be defensive. Look at this. This is part of an old beaver structure with this T-post. There used to be a bigger structure going way out, I bet, and... No, not I bet, I know definitely. And someone cut it with bolt cutters, and guess what? They left it down here. I threw it all up there. The DOT cut it out of the way, obviously with bolt cutters. They didn't break it with an excavator. And they left it here for someone who might go swimming or fishing to get cut on it. I couldn't believe it. But they definitely need to get a bigger structure because a beaver comes by here at night. I'm standing in all kinds of sludge. They can just push it up there. That was mostly mud and sludge. They can block this in like 20 minutes especially if there's two of them working together. And the issue is, you see, even me standing here, I'm stirring things up that are getting stuck. The issue with that is, uh, what was I gonna say? The beavers. Yeah, the beavers can clog it up too fast. If they had a structure going way around, that's more surface area. Plus, if there was ever a big flood, suddenly, it could go over the top and into it. The best thing I've ever seen, the strongest structure I've ever seen, they need a big triangular grate. 
And we're probably gonna go visit that triangular grate later on today. It's only about 15 minutes away. Can't believe it took me all these years to find this thing flooding. All righty. We're gonna go grab camera number two, and then we are gonna go and take a look down the road. There's one more tiny little pipe further up the road. I always check it even though there's no clog, but I just want to look at it. It's something we always like to come check on. So yeah, nice and clean. Here's what it looked like before. Ready to go. And here's what the grate looks like after. Let's get on up out of here. Let's go look at the other side of the road. Gotta wait for a car coming. Yeah, look at that surge that we created. Nice. Going down the Beaver's Trail. Camera number two off. Here's what it looked like before. And here's what it looks like after. Pretty awesome. Now let's go for a little walk down the road. Ooh, it's starting to rain. That's a good thing. All right, going back up to the road. Let's go for a little walk down to pipe number two. One more vehicle. Pipe number two is right at the end of the guardrail. All clear. Let's get over on the correct side of the road. Look at all this beautiful swamp grass growing. The first time we ever unclogged it, this little island here with the dying pine tree on it was almost underwater. Look at that. Beautiful water irises. In here. They're in nice full bloom. Get back over the rail. These guardrails are in such bad shape. Why is this side dipping so low? I never came to check this out. It looks like the poles just sank into the mud. That's what I'm thinking. Because guardrail posts don't have concrete or anything on them. They don't, they want it to give when you hit it. So it's less of a shock. So, the first time we came here, this water was almost two feet higher, right up to the edge of the road. It wasn't in the road, but I could tell it most likely has gone across. This is where pipe number two is. Right here. Now that the water's a bit lower, maybe there's a blockage in it. Nope, still no. But I do see little particles getting sucked into it, meaning it is working. Let's go to the other side and see how much it's working. Still working a very decent amount. Water, uh, the water grass is a lot higher than last time. Not flowing as much as last time for obvious reasons right there. More water irises looking nice and beautiful. All right, we're all set here. This was a fun day. Look at this, the little buds on the grapevine look almost the same as the poison ivy ones right there. So those beavers are gonna have lots of grapes. You know, it should be common knowledge that you're not supposed to park in front of a fire hydrant, but they really need to go ahead and replace that sign that is almost completely illegible. Also, most people who aren't from the country may not even know what that thing is. After an accident or the snowplow, Massachusetts didn't even replace that. And by the rust, it's been like that for years. If it would have been almost any other state, it would have been marked with cones immediately and within a week or two replaced. What a shame. Some people don't like the things I say about Massachusetts, but what am I gonna do, lie? States, when they do nice things, usually New Hampshire, I give them a shout out. This tree, I think, is also infested. And I think this area needs to be reported to the EPA to put up some traps for those guys. Massachusetts had a huge outbreak of those. I forget what town it was a couple of years ago. More, more like 10 years ago. And with enough attention, they... They think they eradicated it. The problem just disappeared after tough treatment. So, 
I hope today's video was interesting, everybody. Thanks for watching and have a great day. Dash camera makes that noise to warn me that someone touched the vehicle when I was away, but it was me slamming the back door.